It is not very often where you get to see two of the best players in MLB The Show go face to face with $15,000 online. We had that this weekend. MLB The Show's Fall Circuit Grand Finals went down. We got the pleasure of watching some of the best players, Weems and Kreiner, both top players in this game, face off with a lot of money on the line. And we're gonna look at the strategies that these two specifically do that separate them from the rest. These two are some of the best hitters in the community. And we're gonna break down their strategy and go through some of the things that we could even apply to our hitting with trying to get better at MLB The Show. Let's get into it. So this is the Fall Circuit Finals. In case you did not see, I played in this this weekend and came up a little short of the top four. If you wanna see how my games went, I posted a video on that yesterday. Make sure you check out that gameplay up there. We had some really good games. But if you do wanna take a look at what the team looks like, they have a certain team build they have to use. You have a certain amount of high diamonds, 95 to 99s, lower diamonds, 85 to 94 diamonds, and then gold you have to use on your team. So they aren't just God squads. So there's a lot of factors that they're looking for. And then pitching staff, you see a lot of guys like Felix Hernandez, Corey Kluber, Jake Arrieta, guys with great sinkers, sliders, slurves, cutters, pitches like that that are the most popular pitches in the game. And the restrictions still go to the bullpen in the starting pitching. So what we're gonna do, let's go into the game. Broke down all of it, but I realized it would be smart to just talk about a few key points about the hitting strategy. What really separates these two players is their ability to hit. In all of these games of this series on legend difficulty, they scored a lot of runs. And we're gonna really break down the scenarios of their hitting strategy and give you different contexts and reasons why they do what they do. Yes, they have great hand-eye coordination, but there is also a strategy and an intrinsic hitting approach that they each have to really put as many good swings up as possible. And this series really encapsulates that because they're both really good hitters. So this is the start of the series. And the hitting approach, the strategy of hitting is a constantly evolving thing. At this point in the series, this is really here to set a tone of the series. And the first thing we're gonna be looking at is their early game approach. They have a, a different strategy at the start of the game in comparison to the later part of the game. You could pick up on a lot of these strategies just in these few scenarios. Um, you could tell what Weens is doing to start off this ball game in the bottom of the first. He's trying to swing aggressively. He's confident in his ability to hit a sinker or a cutter or any fastball type pitch over the heart of the plate. And a lot of times people will just try to attack the zone early on in the game and get those pitches over the heart of the plate. And early in the game, this is a great time to attack when a pitcher doesn't have much confidence. If their confidence is in the middle of the bar, not gonna hit every spot perfectly. Um, there is an aspect of like being able to do perfect pinpoint, but I will say that these dudes know when to attack and they know what pitches they're gonna be expecting in each at bat. So looking here, literally the first pitch of the inning, backdoor cutter, Weens absolutely masters it. These dudes are sending dead red fastballs. They're ready to time up the fastballs, the sinkers, the cutters at all times. That's the timing they have ingrained in their head. And you throw anything over the heart of the plate, they are ready to swing at it early on in the game. They're looking mostly for mistakes over the heart of the plate, but also they're reading in on what their opponent is throwing them. As you see this at bat, he just went yard on down and in sinker. First pitch this at bat, he throws it down and in cutter and he just spits on it entirely. It's a good take, but I think he was taking that pitch all the way. It wasn't over the heart of the plate. A lot of times when people throw that pitch, the next pitch, is gonna be a pitch right in that part of the zone, but the opposite movement. A cutter moves to the right from the hitter's view. So a sinker does a little bit of the opposite, moves a little bit to the left. So people love to throw a sinker here, dot that pitch into the zone, make them think that it's that same cutter, but it isn't. And Weens being as good of a hitter as he is, I think he pretty much predicts that an inside sinker in the similar part of the zone is gonna be inbound here. That's how a lot of people will pitch this scenario. So he sits dead red on an inside sinker here. He's telling himself that's the pitch he sees. He's swinging at it. And out of the hand, right in the slot that he's waiting on, absolutely demolishes it. If you're not expecting that inside sinker, you're usually gonna be laid on it 10 times out of 10, but he does a good job of waiting on it, reading the previous pitch that he got thrown. Now, if you're a grinder and you're struggling in the pitch here, you gotta change up your strategy a bit. You gotta start going away to him. You can't just be tunneling that same part of the zone. You can't keep throwing those inside cutters because Weens knows those inside cutters are likely going to be off the plate. He just got that cutter off the plate. He's likely not going to sit in that inside sinker again. He's likely going to see an away pitch 
does a good job of taking that. Kreiner tries to change up his attack. Now he goes back to that inside cutter in a two strike count. These dudes know how often people like to waste the pitch outside the zone, so he spits on it. Now he goes that dreaded inside sinker again, reads it right out of the hand, and again, that sinker gets absolutely smoked. If you could really change up the speed and really get your opponent to not be on that sinker, it can be effective, but these dudes are sitting dead red on it. Weens knows that that inside pitch right there, after he got a cutter off the plate in a two-strike count, he is expecting that to be a sinker, 100%. He doesn't have many balls to give. He's going to attack the zone with the sinker, and he gets it. So if I were Kreiner, I would be adjusting my strategy, and I would be trying to throw that sinker early on in the count and not in a two-strike count, and throw that cutter early on in the count and go to different pitches in those two-strike counts, or even throw that cutter twice in a row. He just threw that cutter there. He spit on it. I would throw that cutter a second time here, see if he swings at it. A lot of times, people don't expect them to throw that pitch twice in a row. Weens does end up winning game one. Big thing that he does, he scores a lot of runs. He keeps a foot on the gas, tries to form a separation with that lead with Kreiner. You see, it becomes a 5-1 game eventually. It becomes a 12-3 game. And he just pours it on. And even though Kreiner is an unreal hitter, he's going to score runs. Once you get enough of a lead, it's very tough to stop momentum. But these dudes do a good job of just keeping their foot on the gas and constantly scoring. Top, bottom of the first inning, just like when Ween scored a lot of runs. What is his approach going to be? He's going to attack the heart of the plate. You throw any pitches over the heart of the plate, especially like over the middle of the zone right here. He is going to be ready to swing no matter what that pitch is. Um, gets that slur. That's a good job of fighting that off. And that's almost a, a little bit of a lucky hit. But again, he's willing to swing early on in the at bat. He is swinging aggressively. He's trying to attack Felix Hernandez early, get some early runs. Goes the, the slurve off the plate. Could probably sit on a changeup or a sinker in the zone away here. There it is, and he absolutely smacks it. Sometimes sitting and taking the right pitch gives you a good opportunity to predict the next pitch. Just like that, he gets a 2-0 lead. And getting these early runs, it helps literally a ton, man. Kreiner did change. He went to Jake Arietta instead of Corey Kluber here to give him a different look. Arietta throws a little harder. So he's trying to make Weens make an adjustment. Weens just makes a, a good at bat here. Sees the away pitch. He's definitely sitting down and in sinker, waiting for that pitch. That, that's the pitch that a lot of these dudes seem to wait on. That inside sinker, especially down and in. That's such an, a good pitch to turn on. They like to go to it as an out pitch to try to induce weak contact. He fights that one off, stays alive. This would have been a great time to go to a slider down and in, try to dot it on the corner, or at least something to get his timing off. But a bad waist pitch, back to a sinker. He's waiting on the sinker after a slider outside his zone. He has to throw a strike to not walk in the runner and... That is, um, that's the pitch he's going to hit. You read on how your opponent is going to attack you. You see, do such a great job at the plate of predicting what pitches they're going to get and choosing which pitches to attack and be ready for. The game has literally just started. We are in pitch number three of the game. What does he get? Hanging cutter. He's ready to swing, putting pressure on his opponent. Does a good job of capitalizing on the mistake. Does a good job of timing that. But he throw it over the heart of the plate. Early in the count, he's ready to swing. He's not taking it just to see pitches. He is swinging aggressively, and he's confident in his PCI ability and his swing timing. Works a good count here. One, two count. What pitches do you see after an inside fastball? Away changeup. Crushes a hanging changeup. Trying to go to that high changeup to induce some weak contact. Again, it's a mistake. Swinging aggressively, doing a good job of attacking these pitches in the zone. Gets that sinker down and in again. You look at the pitch sequence. Again, 0-2 count. He is definitely sitting on that down and in sinker, no doubt about it. Looking to, to turn on a pitch. Gets a little aggressive after giving, the, giving him a ball. And uh, he just does a good job of crushing it. But right now, you can just tell Kreiner is sitting in his zone. He's waiting for his pitch to hit. Works a good count. He then gets a, a sinker over the heart of the plate. That actually isn't even that bad of a pitch. A sinker down the way is not bad. But he does such a good job of sitting on those inside fastballs. He, he knows Weens is scared to attack him inside. Goes away. Just a great adjustment. He, he does a good job of swinging aggressively. But now he's thinking in the pitcher side of things. What pitch is he going to throw now that he crushed those inside pitches? He's going to throw him away now. He's not going to throw him any more inside fastballs. He does a good job of making that adjustment. Again, that backdoor cutter. It strikes again. They're doing a good job, but you get ahead in these counts. 
they 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 see an early count mistake they'll swing at it but if not they do a good job of spitting at a pitch outside of their zone trying to get things to go their way in the at bat when you get ahead in that count you force your opponent to make good pitches at this point like what do you throw him that he's not gonna hit but yeah, if this were me, if I'm playing against a good player like this, wow. Um, the, the thing that I'm looking at is their swing timing. Look at their PCI placement. And I'm trying to think in their head. I'm trying to think about what pitches they're probably waiting on. And this is just a good way to approach pitching. They aren't doing that as much as you would think. They're just kind of sticking to the general pitching. They're not really changing up speeds or really trying to, to focus too much on their pitching. They're just focusing on their hitting. When, when you're playing against a good player or any player, really, the, the number one thing I focus on with pitching is the feedback, trying to guess what my opponent is thinking at the plate. As you see, though, here in the first inning, the, the initial approach was the same, swinging aggressively, looking for early game mistakes, gets a fastball over the heart of the plate, does a good job of crushing it. And you could tell that is still the strategy, at least early on here. But as this game goes on, you could tell this is just going to be a pitcher pitcher type game. The swings aren't connecting the same. They're playing a little bit less ag aggressive. They're being more passive, seeing more pitches, trying to just catch a, a mistake, but also not really swinging out of their shoes all game. Um, at this point, this is really where the, the pitching comes into play. You got to really pitch creatively. But again, you will still throw those occasional hangers. Hanging changeup gets crushed there by Kreiner. Um, but again, you can just tell he's selling out on the sinker. He wants a sinker over the zone to hit. Gets that one off the plate, but still does a good job of getting a good PCI and good timing. He's a 3-2 lead. And then right away, again, down in sinker, selling out in that pitch. These dudes are basically just focusing on one type of pitch that they know they're going to get and just selling out on that. And also hoping and praying to get a hanger. Because that's really what they're they're capitalizing on. They're not doing as good of a job as adjusting and changing their timing and PCI for pitches they're not ready for. They're really just focusing on those fastballs, those sinker type pitches. Waiting to crush those. And I mean, they're still putting up runs. Seventh inning. Weens goes to a new pitcher. Mike Hampton gets a new slate of confidence. Kreiner gets a chance to capitalize here. Gets a, a new pitcher to face. You could tell he's swinging aggressively here. He is he has changed his approach of being a little bit more passive, taking early count pitches. Gets a lucky little infield hit there. That is a, a lucky break. But now he, he sees this is a chance of him to score. He's really focusing all of his energy on the pitches this inning. Again, looking for that sinker. Looking for that, that sinker over the heart of the plate. Then a sinker or a cutter. Something to mix it up, but he just gets one over the heart of the plate and finally adjusts. Again, man. These dudes know how to hit their fastballs. And that's that's a pitch they're they're finding the most success on that that sinker. It's not the best pitch ever, but you throw it over to hard to play. These dudes have the ability to hit it. New pitcher again, new slate of confidence. Another opportunity, jump on him early in the at bat, and he does here. Not even that bad of a sinker, but is still swinging aggressively over the heart of the plate. Just one really good swing at this point in the game. He doesn't have that much left in him. Now a three-run lead at this point in the game in the series is really monumental. There's a good job of fighting off pitches close like that cutter. He, he is swinging aggressively still, but you can tell the swings aren't as effective as they were early on in the game. You see, he'd probably turn on that cutter early on in this game. He is just selling on those sinkers and cutters. He's waiting for those pitches to hit. Goes to the away cutter. Comes back with a cutter over the heart of the plate. That's just too much plate. He didn't even get the best PCI on that, but that's too much play to that. He's going to get another run here. Now you get Babe Ruth. Now this is the inning for Weens. He's locking it in. He is getting his approach down. This is a $15,000 inning here. So he's locking in. Gets that sinker over the heart of plate again. He's going to start to swing a little aggressively here while Chapman is low on energy. Now you face a new pitcher. He's going to take that approach like Kreiner took a couple innings ago. Selling out in those fastballs. But at this point, man, it's going to be very tough. Need four runs. He does start being a little bit more passive, actually. He is more passive early on in these counts. He's trying to work the count a bit, see some pitches from Kenley, which I guess shows why their aggressive strategy works. But he started to be a little bit more passive, seeing more pitches in the bat. Um, it, it seems to, to start to hurt him. He's not swinging the bat as much. Not getting as many swings in. Puts up a solid swing in that cutter, but you can just tell... 
at that point it's probably too late at this point i mean this is just exhaustion when you when you play this much you, you can't lock it in the same as you were able to a couple hours ago and and Kreiner comes out with the victory but what these dudes do great with they know the general trends of pitching how people like the tunnel on the corners of the zone but also they do a great job of adjusting their approach for different parts of the game when a new pitcher comes in the game they like to attack them swing aggressively be ready to swing and try to look for an early in the at bat pitch to hit those are normally going to be your best pitches you see um as long as your opponent is attacking the zone as much as they were and you can predict some of the pitches you're likely going to see some of those pitches in the bat a lot of times they're seeing those inside sinkers they did a good job of waiting for those pitches to come over the heart of the plate and actually crushing them because they were very good with their PCIs. And just in general, it's a good approach to have. Wait for one or two pitches early on in the, the at-bat. And when you get those pitches, you, you make sure you're ready for them. Try to put up a good swing. Because it's a lot easier to put up a good swing against one type of pitch if you're mentally preparing for it to come. It's all a game of adjusting with hitting. Try to pick up on what your opponent is throwing you. These guys do such an elite job of picking up on the trends of what their opponent's throwing them. And if you're playing against a player like this, the, the number one thing I recommend to you is try to be quirky, be different. Pick up, try to pitch differently than you would anyone else. Try to pick up on some of the overall trends of their timings and their swings and pick into their mentality. You could tell when an opponent is early on an inside fastball, they're waiting for that fastball. Pick up on the trends of your opponent's swing timings and their PCIs. Make those adjustments. Try to recognize what pitches they're waiting for. But that is going to be it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know we did the video early on in the year breaking down Kreiner's gameplay alone. We're going to do more of this type of coverage, breaking down strategy and all that in the, the latter part of MLB The Show 21 here. So if you enjoyed, hit that like button. Make sure you sub down below. Appreciate you guys watching. And I'll see you all again on a video later this week. Deuces.